Three years ago, Anuri Duplessis was arrested and charged with defeating the administration of justice when she tried to protect a 13-year-old rape victim who was being forced to work as a sex slave. Now, three years later, just this week, a court has found that she is not guilty on any of these charges and she's joining me via Skype to speak about her ordeal. Anuri, thank you so much for joining us today. It's such a pleasure, Jerusha, to do this. I'm, I'm really privileged to do this. Now, won't you take us back to three years ago and explain to us what exactly unfolded? Jerusha, um, uh, the police made an appointment, somebody from the police woman from uh, MI, uh, it's crime intelligence, and she wanted me to help them resolving um, the, the drug issue that is in the area that crossroads are situated. And, and in that morning, I wanted actually to took it to the house where, where a lot of drug dealing and even girls were used there. Um, I wanted to take it to the house and, and she agreed to go. Um, at the house, we found a, a young girl and, and, and two men, adult uh, male men. And in the end, um, we all came back to crossroads because there were a few things that, that wasn't um, okay for me and for the other volunteers that were there. Um, at the at crossroads premises, um, uh, this young girl that we found on the premises, um, after a while, um, explained um, or told Pastor Hope McPherson a terrible story about being um, sold into trafficking and being groomed as a sex slave in a small town in, in, in a free state. And then actually after being kept there for six months, daily raped by a group or a gang of men, not once, not twice, sometimes more than that times a day. And then in the end sold to Verenigen and then um, again sold to Farabal Park, where when we found her, she was already being used for two months um, as a prostitute. Uh, she was really in a bad state. Um, she was like smelly, she was like under the influence of something, maybe alcohol, maybe even drugs. Um, she was like a dead person in an alive body. And, and we were stunned, we, we cried, we were shocked. But I phoned the police, a woman who was with me on the scene, and requested her to actually get us help and send us um, people who can work with victims of human trafficking. The response was hideous because she just said to me, you know what you have to do, you have to take it to the police station. And um, whilst we were talking with this girl, she also um, told us that she was very much afraid of the police because the police visited the house where she was kept, where the other girls were kept, and nobody ever did anything actually to help them. So she was very much afraid of the police and even though more afraid to go to the police station because of allegations that there might be police members involved. So then the whole story started because I, after I found this specific woman who was with us when we actually got this girl um, I found more than I don't know how many police people and everybody's response was bring her to the police station which I refused to do because I just knew that taking her there knowing how it works at a charge office would, would, would harm her much much more than she is harmed right now so I requested them to please send the police a people, a woman, that was my request, especially a woman because of what happened to her. And yeah, we waited. Uh, on Wednesday, nobody came and I arranged with the local place of safety um, for her to be taken in and which they came and fetched her because I was not allowed to take her there and they normally come and fetch them. And the next morning, um, she was dropped off again at crossroads so that we still um, was awaiting the police to come and investigate. Mm.